Well, hello, welcome to the Pundit Arena review show for round two of the NatWest Six Nations. What did you make of the weekend? How much did you enjoy? What were the main talking points? We're hoping to cover most of them. My name's Nick Keith. This is Tom May. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. Very good. good. Lovely pink jumper, I think you'll agree. It's not pink. It's not salmon, is it? Uh, anyway, uh, pink or salmon, uh, pink, and, <laughs> pink and blue, anyway. Um, comment, feel free, you know, no, don't. jump in. Uh, so let's start with Ireland, Italy then. Uh, that was, of course, the first game of the weekend and the Irish, well, they went out pretty strongly, looking pretty good. The uh, Italians then getting three tries towards the end and, and we saw them do that the week before. Is it that teams are just easing off the pedal or is, uh, uh, are Italy taking that long to work out how to break a team down defensively? I think it's probably a mixture of the two, actually. Um, it's very difficult when you get into such a big lead, no matter what level you're playing at, to continue with that intensity, knowing that actually the game's in the bag. Mm. Um, Italy, for all of their sort of intent and, and, and the way they try and play, they just lack that bite. And I don't think teams feel that threatened by them. Yeah. So to stay really defensively on point for that full 80 minutes is so difficult against the side that you know you're going to beat. Yeah. Um, that said, I do think Italy... You know, they, they, they continue for the, for the whole 80 minutes. They, they, they're looking to try and play. Minozzi, again, I was really impressed with. Tiny little fella at fullback. Yeah. Um, making line breaks, making crucial, crucial contributions throughout the game. Um, Centre partnership looked good again. Yeah, Costello and, and, uh, and Boney, you know, they were, they were fantastic. And, I, you know, I, I said last week that, that, that potentially a partnership that, that Conor O'Shea can build his team around. Um, but when you're missing 28 tackles in, in a game against an Irish side that are, that are fully loaded, you're going to struggle. So, um, you know, compare that to the, to the Irish, I think they only missed six tackles. So. Yeah, they lost Tyke Furlong, uh, and I think we were awaiting further news this week over the severity of, uh, of his injury and a scan, potentially, um, and also a big loss, Robbie Henshaw. Um, potential replacements in, in Gary Ringrose, Chris Farrell, um, whether they move Keith Earls into 13, an experiment that, that didn't look too good in the Rugby World Cup uh, in their game against Argentina that they lost. Yeah, I, th I think, you know, they're going to lose him, I'd be very, very surprised. Yeah. I mean, he looked pretty sore. Yeah, um, it's got to be a dislocation and, and the rest of the tournament. Now, yeah, you, you know, you'd think you'd think he'd be pushed to come back. I know they're hopeful of that, but but I severely doubt that. Um, but then, from from Joe Smith's perspective, it's about making as few changes to a side as possible. And, yeah. and to be fair, Keith Earls has been performing well on the wing. So why then shift someone in there, bring a new player in to play on the wing mm. when actually? You know, you've you've got some ammo to, to try and load that that spot with in, in terms of Farrell and, and Ringrose. Um, Ringrose probably lacking a bit of game time, but you yeah, know, there's no doubt he has that that ability to to play well on an international stage. So, you know, there, there, there's a few problems to be solved by by Joe Schmidt, but, but you know, they're, they're, I guess the. You know, he doesn't want to compound them by making too many changes to, to what is a winning side at the moment. Yeah, six tries, uh, sorry, six try scorers at the weekend for Ireland. They were certainly spraying it about a bit. Jacob Stockdale looking pretty good coming through. Uh, as we said, Henshaw got a couple, Bundyaki as well. They're, Ireland are, are looking strong, they're looking decent. I mean, with those couple of losses as well, that might affect them. And, and I think a few people, when Henshaw went off, wondered if that was the pendulum swinging more towards England, knowing that at the moment that game at Twickenham at the end of the Championship is still looking pretty decisive to the winner with, with obviously see the likes of, of, of the French and the Welsh with things to say for each of England and Wales but uh, but yeah it's not England and Ireland but um, well, yeah. they want their best players playing don't they and I think Robbie Henshaw if he's gone for the whole tournament that'll be a massive loss to the Irish um, and certainly an area that probably England will try and target because you'll have Bundyaki who's who's you know he's playing well yeah. but not necessarily as experienced on an international stage um, and, and England probably have some firepower to try and unpick that but you know there's a long way to go England got to go up to Murrayfield um, you know, and I think, you know, perhaps Henshaw could be back by then. Mm. You know, maybe that's maybe that's enough time. Who knows? Second game of the weekend then: England against Wales at Twickenham. Uh, you were at HQ while I was uh, up in Glasgow commentating on the women. Um, what was the atmosphere like? How was it with England not scoring any points after the 20-minute mark? Um, it was a fair old arm wrestle, really, in the end, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, you know, many would say it was a fantastic test match from in terms of you know the, the, the tightness of it the tension involved mm. um, thank god I was undercover that was all I was going to say it, it did not stop raining and probably we don't I mean the, the game ended up 12-6 mm. um, probably don't don't give enough credit to the players for, for the you know the, the, the way they, they played the game in, in horrendous conditions yeah. really um, you know when you looked up and you saw the, 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 the floodlights you could see how much it was raining but um, 
you know, players like Watson and, and, and Mike Brown, who was outstanding, you know, dealt with with the Welsh kicking game, which I thought was was pretty aimless at times. Yeah, um, and that was probably um, one of the deciding factors of the game. I think you know, with with, with Ford and Farrell, um, they kicked well, especially Farrell, um, and kicked with purpose. Mm. And I just thought especially the, the Welsh back three, when they kicked the ball back, it was, it was fairly aimless. It was just like whack, get it upfield um, and we'll chase after it. There wasn't really any thought behind it. Um, and you compare that to the English kicking game and that, you know, that was very different. So mm. that might've been one of, the, one, of the, one of the things that swung it England's way. Yeah, Eddie Jones was, you know, he, as many heard with the interview with the BBC's Chris Jones, he, uh, he certainly got his dander up a little bit when, oh, cool. uh, when, yeah, when Chris started <laughs> talking about how well Mike Brown played and then he's saying, well, he's been playing brilliant for however many tests and, and whatever. Um, he then asked him about uh, Rhys Patchell and the fact that, you know, what did you think of Patchell? And, and, and Eddie Jones was very keen to move on and say, well, you know, that, that, if you want to hear about him, speak to Warren Gatland. I thought it was a bit rich given that he, he you know, he fingered Patchell on the Thursday as the man to put pressure on. Patchell, you know, does or does not stand up to the job. And then you want to ask him what his thoughts are on him afterwards. And then he backed it away. I thought it kind of lacked a little bit of class there from Jones. Um, and uh, various people, I think, have had their say on that in the media afterwards. But certainly aerially, as you mentioned, Brown was good. Anthony Watson was very good as well. Um, the kicks in the game, particularly Farrell's thread through the sort of the long range grubber, as I guess we can call it. Eddie Jones said Johnny May's the only one that could have finished a try like that. Uh, it was a touch of class from Farrell, wasn't it? Yeah, and you know when you talk about a good kicking game, it's not it's not just kicks that you can compete for. Mm. It's kicks that that go into space and put Wales under pressure. Mm. Now, even if Johnny May hadn't got that and scored, Wales would certainly have been under a huge amount of pressure. Yeah. Um, and Farrell, as soon as that ball was turned over, he knew exactly where that where it was going. Um, and the fact that you've got you know complete racehorse on the wing, yeah. um, you know it, there was no way that Johnny May wasn't getting there first, and and a, and a great start to the game for England. Yeah. Um, Tackle. Did, sorry, go on. Yeah, I was just going to say the one area, and maybe it was what you were just about to bring up. One, one area I do think that England needs to improve on is tw over twenty missed tackles. Mm. Um, you know, Scotland, France, and Ireland. We, okay, France have, have, have lost two games, but some of their attacking play at times has been brilliant yeah um and you have to be have to be better than that in, the, in a defensive area well i was going to come to the stats on the welsh side you know josh navidi 19 tackles corey hill 18 aaron shingler 17. um you know on the england side maka vinopola 17 joe launchbury 17 we'll, we'll maybe mention joe launchbury's contribution again in a minute but the likes of navidi and hill i mean they and shingler they, they've been playing well in that back row second row corey hill almost you know beyond the event is making people realize why Warren Gatlin wasn't so crazy to bring him along to the Lions setup mm. because he's, he's coming on really well um, but let's just let's just mention um, you know Launchbury a, a brilliant effort from him uh, he he's confounding critics as to you know why, why he wasn't on the why he wasn't store. the Lions store absolutely <laughs> um, you've got Sam Underhill's tackle as well which yeah. was just a stunning moment it gets better every time you watch it I think yeah um, if you're not a Welsh fan uh, yeah there were, there were a lot of a lot of good performances from a lot of people even if it wasn't you know a, an all bells and whistles no, match to watch and, and you know it, and in games like that you've got to do the stuff that pretty ugly and, and, and the stuff that's just graft yeah. to, to get it over the line and I think that's what Launchbury does time and time and time again um, and that said that that offload was outstanding yeah. you know you're getting smashed by two players um, the ability to sort of almost break your fall by sliding Stunning. on your knees and then a, and then a left-handed offload yeah ridiculous um, I think he thinks he's playing for the All Blacks yeah exactly yeah. cheek of him yeah outrageous um, but you know outstanding um, in the rest of the back row you know Underhill played well Sam Simmons was a little quieter are England going to need you know bigger ball carriers for the challenge of Scotland going up there we know Nathan Hughes has eventually made an appearance for Wasps this weekend at the Stoop he's got another potential week before he, he could be in contention Jones likely to have him back in, in camp at least isn't he yeah I, you know I think it's tough on Simmons to back up what he did against Italy, yeah. you know that, that, that that's really difficult. But you know, I, I think it's a different the, sort of game as yeah, well. Yeah, very it? different sort of game. There's a lot of kicking, um, and actually, you know, there's only Mako Vinopolo who's up there with the, the, the top ball carriers. The yeah. rest of them with with a back three. Yeah. So you know, you can tell from from those stats where the game was was won. Yeah. Um, and you know, it, it's just one of those games. You, if, you know, if you're going to try and force that then you get caught out. Mm. So you just have to wait until you get those opportunities. Yeah, he was a bit quieter than he than he was last week and, and perhaps didn't have the, the impact. Okay, you know, scored two tries, but mm. you're not going to do that against against the Welsh side that, that, that you know, 
would have fancied their chances of, of, of winning winning this competition. So, and, and, and talking of you know potentially winning, we haven't talked about the try, the knock on. Was it a knock on? Was there a grounding? I mean, a lot of people have gone back and looked at the footage, and and it, you know, uh, as he's coming in, has it come off the hand of Evans? And well, there's, there's a video to where, where, where his it, fingers sort where of move a bit, yeah, where, and his thigh where, where moves. This a finger bit. randomly moves. Yeah. Um, so you, there's an argument to say that you know, it was a knock on. It was a knock on, and then there's an argument to say, well, then Watson got there first, or he didn't get there first. Yeah. You know, it's a difficult decision. That was early enough on in the game that Wales could have done something about it. Yeah. Um, and you get the calls, and you don't get the calls, yeah. and you just have to react to that. Um, I think more importantly, a post after that was. Um, Scott Williams not securing the corner. Yeah, um, and that was the underhill's tackle that you mentioned. Yeah. So, you know, th th there are things like that, that that happen in games week in week out, and it's just how you react to them, and, that, and then what are you going to do after that? Yeah, um, you can't just go, well, well, that was definitely a try, so yeah, we, yeah. we should have had five points. Yeah. Well, we heard from Eddie Jones and uh, Warren Gatlin. There was a bit of the post match on the uh, Pundit Arena Facebook page. If you missed it, do go and look it up and hear what they each had to say at the end. Uh, but uh, well, there's our dig digest on England Wales. Of course, England have uh, got to go up to Edinburgh and uh, and meet the Scots in Murrayfield, which brings us nicely onto Scotland against France. 32-26 it finished, Scotland being guided more calmly towards the victory by Greg Laidlaw being moved into the fly half position. Um, there's a lot of chat about Finn Russell forcing this. We weren't convinced in his performance in round one. It seems to be continuing in round two, doesn't it? Yeah, it's just his kicking game. Um, you know, there's, there's a real lack of control in the way that he tries to, to manage the game for Scotland. Um, the execution of his kicks, at times it's the right decision, but mm. the execution is just not there. Um, and, and at that level, that can expose you as a, as a player, but then it puts the team under a huge amount of pressure as well. Yeah. Um, and that's probably why Scotland don't seem to have a plan B to, to go back to, or didn't certainly in the first game. Yeah. I think moving Laidlaw to 10, um, you know, and having watched that on the box, um, Clearly, he didn't know much about that coming either. <laughs> um, you know, but, but but you can understand why Townsend would choose Laidlaw to go back there with his experience, with his ability to just slow the game down and, and make considered decisions. A bit more pragmatic. Uh, yeah, yeah, about about how he's going to guide Scotland around the field, and it worked. You know, his kicking game was was a, was a lot more accurate. The other frustrating thing is, you know, these these penalty kicks to touch that Finn Russell gets. There's one thing doing it in play. But then missing a touch when you've got an opportunity to just knock the ball off the field yeah. is it's just criminal. Mm. And he's done that several times now in two tests. Yeah. Um, and then I, I understand the relaxed attitude that you can have to a game, and, and clearly that's the type of player that he is. But you can't just keep smiling about it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, for me, that would that, I can understand it. Doesn't win you too many fans, does it? No. No. I'm not. I'm not. I wasn't. I'm not a Scottish supporter, but yeah. that was, it was roughly my feathers. Um, yeah. And I can imagine some of my Scottish friends would find that quite frustrating. That he'd be smiling, and I understand why he's smiling, but it, does, it just doesn't convey the, the, a great message when, when, you know, really a game's not that 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 too in shape at, at that moment in time. Yeah, the French the French had passages of looking brilliant. I mean, Tedros Tomas's abil ability to just stand someone up and go around the outside and cr create a try from nothing is clearly why he's in That's the side. Russell he knocked off as well. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was. Another another moment for Finn Russell not to look back on uh, too fondly. But yeah, they, they certainly have got it. And, and Dumeru as well, a, a, another key break, you know, late in that second half. They, they've certainly They've got the minerals, but that yeah. Scotland actually, you know, fair credit to them for managing to get that result over the line and, and send Murrayfield home delirious. Yeah, and I think probably well, France seemed to get a bit lost in their phase play, mm. um, and it's difficult bringing Boxies in out of the sort of international wilderness and dumping him straight back into the test team and saying, right, crack on. He looked quite good, though, he I have did, to say, yeah, for after, all of me your chat. after me bagging him last oh, yeah. week, he did, uh, he did actually look I think look was, right. There was one offload, I think, that went all over the place and was intercepted towards the end, but actually yeah. there, there were some nice little touches, some little feeds back on the inside for, yeah. for forwards running There was through. some absolute craziness that came off, though. Yeah. He fumbled one ball on his own line, then sort of juggled it and then chucked it out the back door. To, yeah. to, to uh, it was either the uh, Palace at fullback or, or one of the wingers, yeah. um, two minutes from his own line. So, you know, he's confident in his own ability. Yeah, but fun. I, yeah, I, I, would, I would like to see him below get more of a chance because um, yeah, okay. he, you know, he's, he's going to be a player of the future, and that's really yeah. what, what the French fans want to see. Mm. You know, uh, the, the, the team being taken into the future by Jacques Brunel and, and really them, them making a statement for that, that position. Um, but, you know, I think they are close, mm. um, and it must be pretty frustrating for them right now just to have, have, have fallen short they looked knackered though at yeah. half time you know was, they could have 
shut up shop and just gone home. Do you think Conor O'Shea might be uh, rubbing his hands at the opportunity of taking on France in round three? Well, especially with the way that the Italians have been playing. Yeah. You know, they want to try and spread the ball about. Yeah. Um, Tommaso I mean, Allen's been doing a great job for them. If Italy are capable of scoring 19 points late in a game, and France aren't looking that good at sticking 20 plus on in a game in the first place, then it, it could be in for a tasty yeah. encounter on that Friday night in round three. Yeah, it'd be great. I mean, it's it's down in Marseille, which will be, which will be, you know be a spectacle in itself. Um, but it but it sort of stands up to be quite a good game actually, and, and the, the Italians always seem to frighten the, the, the French in, in some ways. Mm. Um, in the Pro 14, that Benetton beat the Scarlets this weekend, so they're no mugs, mm. um, and, and they are improving. But 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 let's see uh, let's see how the French stand up in a couple of weeks' time. I think we'll learn more about them then. But it's yeah. fantastic performances all the same. Camera in the back row was yeah. brilliant. I thought Ituria in the second row, uh, the young Clermont um, second row was, was outstanding. Yeah. Um, Mashner's hair was getting a lot of attention on yeah. Twitter. No, yeah. just you didn't notice that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. And, and, uh, like Teddy Tomo was you know, outstanding. Yeah. Lovely. Um, well, I think that uh, roughly puts the, uh, puts the end to our discussion on that. Of course, one thing to mention, um, we're hearing about a little fracas uh, mm. involving the uh, the French players getting involved with a few Scottish fans. The police have stopped their plane leaving. Um, they've gone on and, and hauled a few French players off. Some of them might have, uh, have got a cut or a bruise or two. A um, bit too much Van Rouge on Saturday night? Sunday night even. Potentially. Uh, it's not the first time the French have caught themselves in trouble, is it, when they've been away from home? Let's see what comes out in the, yeah. in the next few hours. But pretty pretty awkward I would imagine being sat yeah. on a plane ready to head back to Paris and then suddenly you're hauled off in front of the <laughs> yeah. Scottish police yeah nothing worse than getting pulled off by a Scottish policeman uh, right that probably just about sums it up um, premiership wise there were a couple of things just to mention uh, Carl Eastman's red card Danny Cipriani yeah. confirmed as leaving Wasps not a big secret um, Joe Marla likely to be back now from his band so a, a few things to be watching you know in domestic stuff ahead of round three yeah I mean there's some there's some you know amazing games over the weekend as I mentioned, Benetton beating Scarlets, yeah. uh, Worcester winning away at Exeter. Oh yeah, of course, uh, incredible. incredible, classic. Yeah, six, six five. Yeah. yeah, not a football <laughs> score. Um, you know, some 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 brilliant stuff domestically, which which may have an influence on the next round of the Six Nations. Who knows? Yeah, good, good. All right. Well, we hope you've enjoyed the review, and uh, we look forward to seeing you ahead of a preview uh, or for a preview for round three. Have a good couple of weeks.